Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Floral Learningism. Once upon a time, we took a look at GMIC. I've called it GMIC because I couldn't figure it out, but I've heard others call it gimmick, which actually makes a lot of sense. So apparently it's gimmick, and it integrates with a lot of things, Krita, Paint.net, GIMP. I wanted to catch us back up to the exciting developments that have come out with recent releases of that, show you the new filters and things, and also let's take a look at the shell at the command line that comes built into this because there's some awesome things you can do with that. Let's get to it. Okay, so once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If this is your first time joining in, thank you so much. Do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning, to surface the cheap or free art technology tools so that you can know about them and make good use of them. And also to build a community of learning so that we can strengthen each other, share our knowledge, and make each other stronger. All right, so we've talked about it before. I've called it GMIC or GMIC. I believe it's called Gimmick. I think that's the correct pronunciation because that makes a lot of sense just looking it over and hearing that spoken by somebody else. So Gimmick. And I'm going to look at it today in context of Krita. Again, this will work with uh, Paint.net. It will work with GIMP. Um, it'll work with a bunch of other things too, but those are the three primary ones that I typically uh, focus on. And today I'm going to work in Krita because that's what I'm set up to do. Uh, so let's do that. In Krita specifically, if you're looking to uh, to see the settings or if you're looking to update to latest, because you do have to do that manually. It doesn't come packaged uh, with Krita to my knowledge. I had to go download it manually. Uh, that is under Settings and Configure Krita. And there's a special section right at the bottom here for G uh, gimmick working, <laughs> building the habit of saying it, gimmick QT integration. And then you have to specify where the EXE is that you downloaded, at least in the case of Windows. Um, you can download this uh, very simply, and I'll put a, a link to the download location in the description below. So help yourself to that, and then simply point to it uh, from here when you're ready to do that, okay? Then when you're ready to launch it, it is under Filter and Start Gimmick. And that usually does take a second, so be patient as it does. All right, so this is the basic layout. Um, I'll put a card up uh, over there so you can kind of take a look back. We did a, a video on this some time ago, kind of uh, explaining how things fit together and the options and things. So go check that out. Um, I'm going to focus today on catching us up on some of the latest and greatest. And this is not going to be every new filter because there's been a lot of iterations, but the new ones are really cool. So let's just jump to those really fast, the new filters under degradations there is something called rebuild from similar blocks. And this is actually a really cool idea. It's this modern concept of like kind of pixelating something, but not really. It's like taking a section and almost like blowing up a fixed amount of pixels in a grid. And it adds a really cool effect. And I think it could add a really nice modern feel uh, to something if we're looking to take it up a notch and, and give it kind of a distinctive look. Um, so that's a really cool one, rebuild from similar blocks. You can, of course, play with the block size and change you know, how distinctive that becomes. Um, but check that out, rebuild from similar blocks. Another one is, uh, again, under degradations, is the blur multi-directional. Another really neat concept where you can take an object and, it, again, make it into something, transform it into something distinctive from there. This is taking portions of it and then actually like starring out um, blurred patterns in the image, which again can be really, really interesting. Uh, play around with the options, uh, the orientations and the angles. And um, yeah, it's it, there's some really interesting pieces of this uh, to, to add some nice touches into images is take things up or take in a different direction or modernize it in a way. So try that out. And the last one that came out with the latest release, and this is, I believe is 2.3, sorry, 2.9.3, um, but they mentioned something, let's go into patterns and random pattern. And again, another very interesting concept. And this is all about seeding uh, colors. So there's really like a really long stretch of how this can get adjusted. Um, you can almost think of it sort of like a fractal generator, kind of. Um, it is doing a lot of computational math to generate this stuff. So 
This could be interesting if you're looking purely for a pattern, although I have not really been able to take, you know, come into this and say, oh, well, if I want it to look like this, I knew I need this seed number because the seeds are just like sky's the limit here. Um, but if you're looking for something randomly generated and you're willing to kind of play through and, and test that out a little bit, this could be very interesting for generating backgrounds, distinctive backgrounds. So worth a try, give it a shot. All right. If you're looking for more of the other uh, filters that are going on uh, that have kind of caught up to the latest, let's just bring up where that is here. Let's fire up release notes so you can see here. So yeah, we've covered these things. We just jumped through these different filters. Um, a couple of these we'll get to in a second. Look back though on the other releases because there are some other really interesting things that I'm just going to point you to in these release notes um, that are really, really innovative and interesting. Um, and I would recommend that you play with them and try them out because they can add some interesting qualities uh, to your image work. So have a look there and uh, don't hesitate to, to go play with those. But those are the three latest in the latest version. Again, this is a catch up to the latest version. So now I'm really, I'm really excited about this part. There is a whole command line piece, which I kind of sort of found in the uh, the download section before, and I was kind of thinking, oh, that's kind of nice, but what, what can you really do with it? Well, today, we're going to look at that because there's some awesome things, all right? So let's back out of all these things for a second. And again, I'm going to stick with this picture I took of a fire in my backyard. It's not a very high-quality image, but that's okay because we're just doing proof of concept here. So... So in order to access the shell, you do have to download it again from the download section. I'm working on Windows, so I downloaded the Windows version of it. And then you, in your command prompt, whether it's in Linux or whether it's in Windows, you do have to point to where it is, the point of origin of where that package is. Um, so I've already done that in Windows. There's, there's the command CD or change directory, and I put the path because I like to bury things incessantly. Um, so I've already navigated there. And I'm ready to use it, but know that you have to point the command prompt to that location before you use it. Okay. All right. So two very, very interesting commands that I just want to step into. And these are just kind of like a whet your appetite things. There are so many different things out there and there's a lot of documentation. And I'll put a link uh, again in the description for that so you can read up and try these things. But just to see the possibilities, let's do that. All right. So one command that I was able to piece together is this. And what this does is we point it to a source image. And again, that's this image. Okay, that's what we're starting with. All right. And then we're adding in a specific filter from Gimmick. This is the Unsharp Mask, which in this case, it's going to do some funny things. It's not a very high quality image. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But it's an example. There's some parameters which read the documentation because they do different things. Okay. And then dash O is the output. And we're just going to send it out. Now, this is really cool when you think about something like batch processing, because let's say that you did a studio shot or you did a whole series of images that all need the same adjustment and you know exactly what it needs to be. You could look up in the documentation what the filter is and the settings, get those all mapped out properly, and then you could actually just fire this through as a loop <laughs> and do them all uh, with that same command without opening up each image individually and doing it that way. So it's an efficient way if you have, like, let's just say, 100 images to do. It, it offers some very interesting scalability for that. So I'm going to fire this command off. It reports back and echoes some things, and then it tells me it finishes. And over here, that has dropped. This is what we have created. OK, again pixelated because the quality wasn't good. It was shot at night, but you can see that it actually did something from a command, <laughs> which is really cool. <laughs> so that's the example one. The second one, and this is really cool because today I know that there's a big push to have kind of the B-roll, kind of the background interesting stuff going on. Um, if you wanted just kind of a stylistic background while you're explaining something or to put fancy text on top of, here's an idea. All right. So there is a command to actually generate video. You can generate brief blocks of animation with gimmick <laughs> um, using a command. Now, I will say also, because this, this was not well explained, <laughs> I found this out by doing error tracing, and I'm doing this for your benefit 
that this does rely on FFmpeg. I'll try to put another uh, card so that you can go watch that video and see how to set that up. I had to specifically copy FFmpeg, that executable in the Windows sense again, into the directory, right here it is, uh, alongside the gimmick shell, okay? It will have to be there because it looks for it for this command, all right? So back in my command prompt, uh, we have this command that I've just pasted in and just to step it through, can we start with gimmick to call the executable? There's a whole lot of piecework to this, which I'm not gonna pretend to understand. I found some samples and I cobbled them together, but the result is very interesting and I'd like you to explore this and, and kind of see what things done. I, I've played with a couple things here and there, but again, it's really kind of um, trial and error. And sometimes that's what this is gonna be, but this is an example of what can be generated by command without any graphical work. And you could use this command as an example. All right, I will make this available so that you can easily copy and paste this and try this out and have a basis to work from. Uh, but let's do this, all right? So I am using all of these different settings. We're gonna spit out an MP4 in the end result, and we're generating random things. You'll see noise in here, you see blur, um, you see some um, some other things, the split effect, the gamma. Let's execute it. That flies a lot of things past me. It is relying right now, it's not really saying so much, but right now it's actually tapping into FFmpeg to do some of these pieces. Can't wait for you to see what actually happened here. Now that I've talked it up a lot and it's kind of like, I hope it works now. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. And you'll notice kind of the subtle animated motion going on. Generated from a command and you could tweak some of those parameters and you could spit out backgrounds like this, animated backgrounds, just and, and a variety of them, but just by te tweaking a few different parameters and get some things to work with very, very quickly. So that offers some amazing possibilities of how you could rapidly create interesting background video. Awesome, right? All right, so the Gmic shell console, very, very awesome stuff. So, all right. I've said enough. All right, so anyways, thank you so much for watching and stepping through this with, the, again, gimmick, GMIC, GMIC from what I call that, I believe is gimmick. Go download it, try it out if you haven't already, and go watch the video and learn how to get that set up and set in. FFmpeg, again, is in addition to this. Try that out as well. Some amazing command line stuff built into that as well. And it will work in Krita. It will work in GIMP. It will work in paint.net. Um, there's actually a pretty long list of things out there on the... Uh, gimmick site which i'll just point you to here and you can see so check it out it's free open source integrates with a lot of different things and that's that thank you so much for joining in for this video and spending your time with me if this was helpful to you and eye-opening please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome projects that are coming up in the future i look forward to seeing you at the next video as we progress and continue to explore new and fascinating art technologies and leave a comment it's great when people join the conversation and, and not just for me leaving questions and things but for each other because again the focus of this is building community thank you so much catch you later